Oh, okay. So maybe first let me point out I've been 10 years at Qualys. Um, I started in the operations area, so there the responsibility was basically keeping the servers up and running. Went through engineering, yeah. that was the, the product. And as a CTO, the challenge is now how to, uh, the innovation side. So what new things could we add to Qualys to make it a better product or to make the information better? Um, and then from a high level, because you, you know, you've been at Qualys 10 years, lots have happened. Uh, but let's say the last two or three, what are some of the biggest changes you've seen in the last two or three years? Is it just the rise of cloud and cloud type security issues or is it something else? So within our customers, we've seen that people started to worry more about web application security. So and I, I would call it production web application security. How many web applications do I have yeah. and how secure are they? So rather than saying, I know I have www.companyname.com, and I need to secure that, looking how many others do I have that I don't necessarily know about that people bring up basically on their own, maybe the marketing department for a campaign, and that expose the brand uh, due to security problems. So we've seen lots of people saying, um, of our customers, we've got a good idea of our infrastructure, we know how to scan that, and we think we have a good idea on configurations, we can verify that. Web application is the next frontier. and much more challenging than infrastructure because infrastructure we usually point out you have this problem and here's the patch for it. Yeah. Uh, web application typically you cannot do it this way. Sometimes you can say oh you're using WordPress 1.8, yeah. 1.9 is better and it doesn't have this problem anymore but the majority of cases are custom made, custom written web applications where the fix is not that easy. Basically going back to the developer go in a full QA cycle, so it tends to be much slower. It's one of the reasons why we are investing into the development of a web application firewall. It's going to be early next year, we'll, you will have a product that will help um, bridge that gap between detection and fix, which tends to be months on, on web applications. So the idea there is that you could use the web application firewall to provide a stopgap measure for some of the attacks or partially for some of the attacks. Good. Uh, and then at a high level, just argue devil's advocate between, say, you know, desktop and web application. What's fundamentally the difference then? Is it just web applications or PHP, Ruby, or other sorts of languages as opposed to just you know C Sharp or, or whatever it might be? Or is there some other fundamental tenet that makes it different? Is it the attack surface because it is on a web server and the number of ports or, or something fundamental that changes it from the way you would have done things before? On the desktop side? Yeah, um, yeah I think the, basically the protocol is different. So you have a un uh, one protocol, HTTP, maybe HTTPS, sure. uh, that makes it very accessible. It's very well um, understood by the tools, whereas each, each desktop application has its own, I want to say, protocol as well, its yeah. own file format, um, not well documented, proprietary. So they're very diff different in, in terms of how they get attacked. Um, is there a particular class that keeps coming up and again and again and again that you would expect would persist for years to come or is it something that changes uh, over time? Mm. I think it has been pretty constant. I mean, the people are introducing new vulnerabilities all the time, but the uh, top vulnerabilities continue to be cross-site scripting, SQL injection, file inclusion, um, it's typically the same top team session handling vulnerabilities. It's still the majority of web applications pretty basic uh, security problems that can be solved um, by um, applying mm, let's say well-known security technology it's more of a problem that this is not well uh, known the technology is there the education is not there many developers don't know and uh, develop with not with security in mind yeah. And it, it's not really their fault. I mean, there's many components that interact to do this sure. um, pressure this of a, timing. And this has been a persistent challenge for yes. years. Uh, is there, knowing that developers are the way they are, and being one I know you know, we can be lazy because we just mm -hmm. want to finish things, um, then is, some, is it something that Qualys or the security industry can do to insulate security, uh, insulate lazy hackers, lazy developers against their own lack of knowledge? Um, are you saying is it possible to develop without knowing security? Yeah. 
and just wrap a security wrap around it so that even something that theoretically is insecure with you know null pointers, SQL injections, uh, you know validations that are not inputted can still be safe afterwards. Mm, I think that is very difficult. Okay. I think you could educate developers to do it, or you could have an application architecture where the security um, uh, impacting pieces are written by people that know security and you talk through an API that is well defined. Um, so, it, But this is basically a development yeah. change, a development process change that has that we have to undergo. We can do web application firewalls and they can help, but they are not a final solution for the problem. Now, other vendors like to talk about um, virtualization, doing all kinds of different uh, virtual sandboxing or process isolation, whatever you want to call it, as a way to mitigate web application or any kind of application risk. Is that something that you see as of benefit? Mm, for web applications, I don't really see the connection, I have to say. I mean, the typical web application, I guess it depends what you want. So if I want your data, and the web application has access to the data, there's no sandboxing or virtualization that's going to help you against that. Um, if my objective is to control the machine and your web application has a vulnerability, um, then these measures might help. They might prevent me from abusing that vulnerability to exercise control over the machine. So, was that clear? If I want the data and the web application has it, sure, I can get to it by design. The web application has access to that. The web application could be designed in a more compartmentalized way. Mm -hmm. um, typically they're not today. Typically um, the web application has a user that connects to the database and that user has access to all data structures in that database, Makes even sense. if that's not necessarily sure. necessary. And then the flip side, the Linux guys uh, would say, you know, Red Hat in particular would say something like uh, SE Linux where there's mandatory access controls on all the constituent components of an operating system that locks down every piece that an application may touch, that that is almost a silver bullet. Is that something that you see when you, you look at you know something like mandatory access control, whether it's in Linux or otherwise, or is that not really something that's helpful for web applications? Hmm. I, I think it can be helpful. I think that those things help to see if the application is behaving weirdly. Again, if we're saying all the application wants is to pull out data, this type of thing is not going to catch it. If we say the application is being used to plant a new executable on the system that escalates privilege and installs itself, then something like SE Linux that kind of would know that the application cannot do this would flag that and, and probably even prevent it. So I see SE Linux as a good infrastructure uh, security yeah. measure and it helps a lot against people that are trying to take control of the, of the application of the machine that the application runs on, but not necessarily that abuses the functionality of the application to pull out the data that you were um, probably trying to protect. Got it. Good. Um, and then, you know, I just mentioned Linux, and I know we talked a little bit about Microsoft before, but um, when you look at platform security operating systems, whether it's Linux, Mac, Windows, and web applications, um, is there one that's particularly uh, better for certain types of web applications than the other in terms of security? Or because everything is browser-based and browsers and the servers doesn't matter really mm. what the end client desktop is anymore? Better? Hmm, that's hard to say. I think a competent development team can develop a secure web application with any of these technology choices that are around. So being Linux, Java, PHP, yeah. Um, or the Microsoft options, SQL Server sure. and, and .NET and, and so on. Um, some are easier to use than others and many of these have security problems. So the older Microsoft technologies have lots of security problems when, when you were running in ASP pages. There's lots of things that, you, that makes it very easy and unfortunately also lead to an insecure implementation. PHP on the Linux side probably has a similar yeah. uh, uh, reputation of making it uh, very easy to develop things and then also making it very easy to run something or to write something insecure. Got it. Good. Uh, and then last question, just uh, rounding out our conversation. When you look at all the challenges that you face as a CTO and then the challenges that your customers face, are there any particular ones that you know keep you up at night, uh, that really worry you, but something that you may not be able to solve that is still uh, a problem that's a real challenge that you need to fix? Or 
do you feel comfortable knowing that you know the technologies that you have, the technologies that are in the marketplace, are enough to secure uh, the internet, web applications, mm -hmm. your customer base? Oh, well, there's, uh, I think there's plenty of threats out there yeah. that would keep me up at night. I think uh, sophisticated adversaries have, um, you know, I don't want to say unlimited means, but have very could, can go to great lengths to penetrate inside an organization and, and get the data out. And um, I think that is very, very difficult to prevent. So if you're up against a sophisticated adversary, um, I think that that is a very thorny problem. I think we have a pretty good handle on kind of standard attacks. I think the, we've got the tools to help us there. It's just and just between quotes and implementation problem so that people can uh, use these tools correctly and many don't do. And there I feel comfortable to say that is available uh -huh. and you could do something about it. But um, yeah, some of the attacks that we've seen lately reported, uh, I'd say, yeah, that is very, very difficult to defend against. So what's next? What do you need to do to defend against that? Is it you have to you know, hire a whole bunch of new uh, people in Qualys Labs to try and come up with some kind of better defensive techniques? Or do you go find another job? Or what do you do? Oh, for Qualys directly? <laughs> well, I think we're going through a normal cycle yeah. of very sophisticated defense technologies. So right now I would say if you have the basics done, you could look at um, some very sophisticated uh, in analysis of your logs to see what else is going on. So if you if you have your infrastructure hardened and uh, your applications are well developed, then it would make sense to invest money into a team that looks through the logs and tries to find patterns in there. The tools are becoming available in that area. I don't think they're easy to use yet. Mm -hmm. They require some very trained users. And I think that will become better over the next four or five years. Right? Is that something, a business that you could see yourself getting into? Um, I th we are looking at uh, aggregating uh, more te security technologies into Qualys Guard. That's yeah. kind of our flagship sure. product. And it does three things today or four things today. Um, we will add more things yeah. to it. Um, and we'll try to make them available through that interface so that the companies can focus on actually using the results that come out of it rather than operating the tool. But um, yeah, the more sophisticated tools today, you have to invest significant uh, competence on actually getting them to run and, uh, and operate correctly.